Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 22nd of September. Onus on Pakistan to act against terror groups, says India. Afghanistan signs peace accord with militant group hizb e islami And ancient heritage and vibrant culture mesmerize visitors at Ladakh festival in India. And now for all the details. In a strongly worded reaction, India has told Pakistan that talks cannot be held with gun in hand. This comes as Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif at the UN accused New Delhi of imposing unacceptable conditions for peace talks. Pakistan wants dialogue while holding a gun in its hand, a terrorist gun in its hand. Talks and guns don't go together. Our position on a dialogue has been consistent. We have always been ready for a dialogue, but we will not succumb to the blackmail tactics of a government in Islamabad that seems eager to use terrorism and terrorism as policy. This was in response to Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's speech at the 71st session of the United States General Assembly, where he claimed of going the extra mile to engage with India through talks. Prime Minister Sharif also received a major backlash for hailing Hizbul Mujahideen militant Burhan Wani as young leader of Kashmir. 22-year-old Wani, a wanted terrorist in India, was killed by Indian security forces in an encounter in May. Now who the hell is Burhan Wani? Burhan Wani is an acknowledged, self-acknowledged terrorist of the Hezbollah Mujahideen, a banned and proscribed terrorist organization, banned by the United Nations, banned by the United States, banned by India, banned by so many countries of the world as a proscribed terrorist organization. And now things have come to such a pass that the Prime Minister of Pakistan wants to go in the UN General Assembly and sing praises of terrorists, promote terrorism on the UN podium. In his speech at the UN General Assembly, which was mostly aimed at taking pot shots at India over the Kashmir issue, Prime Minister Sharif, however, failed to mention the recent Uri terror attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir province, in which 18 Indian soldiers were killed. Staying on news from India, one terrorist was killed in an encounter in Bandipur district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. Terrorists were said to be holed up inside a house and heavy exchange of fire were reported from both the sides. The encounter comes three days after four terrorists who allegedly came from Pakistan attacked an army camp in the Uri sector of the province, killing 18 Indian soldiers. This was also followed by two infiltration bids by Pakistani terrorists at the de facto border called Line of Control, which was eventually foiled by the Indian troops. India had on Wednesday summoned Pakistan envoy in New Delhi, Abdul Basit, over the Uri terror attack and infiltration bids. Meanwhile, Baloch activists and leaders staged demonstration outside the United Nations office in New York City. Protesters demanded freedom from Pakistan and end to human rights violations in Balochistan. Baloch nationals on Wednesday staged a protest against atrocities laid by Pakistan on the residents of Balochistan outside United Nations headquarters in New York City. The protesters took to the streets and denounced Pakistan, urging India to give shelter to its orphaned Baloch population. 
एक बड़ी जमहूरियत है ना सिर्फ उस, उस एरिया में उस रीजन में सब कॉन्टेंट में बल्कि दुनिया में एक बड़ी जमहूरियत गर्दानी जाती है मानी जाती है तो भारत अपना जो तारीखी रोल है उस रीजन में उसको प्ले करे और बलुस्तान के लोगों को उन के अजाब से जो पाकिस्तान के अंदर वो रह रहे हैं उस अजाब से बलूचों को निजात दिलाए They claimed Pakistan Prime Minister is least bothered about the atrocities being committed by the army in the southwestern province. Bas har waqt aakar chillata hai Kashmir mein ho raha hai Kashmir mein ho raha hai Kashmir mein ho raha hai. Kabhi unko Baluchistan ka bhi pata honi chahiye ki Baluchistan mein tumhari ye army kya kar rahi hai? Tumhari ye jo poj ke jo Rail Sharif pe ye kya kar raha hai wahan par? Ye ye jo hai uske likhe hue ek paper एक लिखा हुआ पेपर जो रायल शरीफ की तरफ से उनको मिला है वो यही पड़ेगा बलोच एक्टिविस्ट एंड लीडर्स हैव बीन होल्डिंग डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड टू हाईलाइट द ह्यूमन राइट वायोलेशन बाई पाकिस्तानी सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज रिसेंटली द चीफ ऑफ बलोच रिपब्लिकन पार्टी प्रहमदाग बुक्ति अनाउंस टू अपील फॉर पोलिटिकल असायलम इन इंडिया This comes as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently has been vocal about the plight of the Baloch people. Women in Pakistan have often been victims of domestic violence, suppression and even honor killings. Pakistani Women's Human Rights Organization organized a protest outside the UNHRC in Geneva to highlight these issues. Members of Pakistani Women's Human Rights Organization held a silent protest outside the United Nations Human Rights Council office at Geneva against domestic abuses women face in Pakistan. The protesters used the platform to highlight gender-related violence, sexual abuse and honor killing that is rampant in the country. Protesters allege that although some cases of violence do attract international attention efforts haven't been taken to change the ground realities Hum future mein nahi ja rahe hum wapas medieval times mein ja rahe Ye jo Pakistan mein religious clerics hain jo hamare molvi hain wo ab bhi hamare khwatin ko human rights ki defy karte hain A coalition of 30 religious groups had protested against the Punjab province passing of Protection of Women Against Violence Act 2015 which listed protection to women against a range of crimes including domestic, emotional, psychological and economic abuse, stalking and cyber crime. Honor killing has also been a major crime against women in Pakistan. The recent killing of country's social media star Kandil Baloch and Samia Shahid, a British Pakistani, for honor of the family grabbed international attention, showing the poor plight of women in the country. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. After years of negotiations, the Afghan government on Thursday signed a draft peace agreement with insurgent group Hizb-e-Islami. A report. A draft peace agreement was signed between the Afghan government and the militant group Hizb-e-Islami led by Gulbuddin Hekmatyar in Kabul during a press conference in Afghanistan High Peace Council. The long awaited peace agreement was signed in Kabul on Thursday bringing to an end 2 years of negotiations. The US embassy in Kabul meanwhile welcomed the peace deal and said in a statement that it was a step towards bringing the conflict in Afghanistan to a peaceful end. The delegation of Hizb-e-Islami arrived for peace talks with Afghan government in mid-March following the conclusion of Quadrilateral Coordination Group or QCG meeting on Afghan peace process. Meanwhile in Bangladesh the death toll from a ferry sinking in Bangladesh Sandhya river rose to 18 on Thursday as four more bodies were recovered according to police eight people are still missing the local administration has also formed a probe committee to investigate the cause of the accident on Wednesday a steep river bank collapsed in Bangladesh southern Barisal town and a huge slab of mud fell on top of an overcrowded ferry while it anchored According to reports the boat had been carrying about 50 people some of whom were able to swim ashore 
More on news from India. Triumphant Indian Paralympic athletes returned home on Thursday to a rousing reception after delivering their best ever performance. Festive atmosphere prevailed at the New Delhi airport as India's victorious athletes returned from the recently concluded Paralympic Games in Rio. Gold medalist Devendra Jajaria and Mariappan Thangavelu and bronze medalist Varun Singh Bhatti were greeted with drum beats and loud cheers from overjoyed fans. Jajaria set a new world record in javelin throw at Rio with his 63.97 meters, surpassing his own record of 62.15 meters at the 2004 Athens Paralympics. <laughs> India, which had sent its largest ever contingent of 19 athletes to Paralympics, won two goals and a silver and bronze each. Local traditions and cultural programs are at display in the ongoing Ladakh festival. Masked and traditional dances are the highlight of the event. The week-long Ladakh festival opened in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province with colourful cultural performances. Celebration began with paying homage to the 18 soldiers who died in a terror attack in Uri sector. Musicians and dancers put up an enthralling show at the inaugural ceremony in Leh district. Scores of people from the province and outside gathered to witness the events. I really enjoyed to be here on the festival. It's so much uh, cultural variety and I, I love it to be around. So I'm uh, very happy to be here today. Eh? This is uh, my first experience and uh, it's uh, altogether learning a different culture and which I really wanted to see. And in fact, I, am, I was not aware that such kind of festival was running here. The annual festival hosts a variety of events to showcase the local culture, including music concerts, handicraft displays, archery competition and polo matches. Apart from drawing in tourists from across the country, the Ladakh festival is also a major attraction for photographers. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Honest on Pakistan to act against terror groups, says India. Afghanistan signs peace accord with militant group Hezbe Islami. And ancient heritage and vibrant culture mesmerized visitors at Ladakh festival in India. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.